Welcome to worship today. My name is Dory Newcomer. I'm the pastor here at the Lima United Methodist Church, and we are um, in the season of, of Epiphany. So we're still talking about being in the light, recognizing the light, sharing the light. And our key verses today come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1, 2, and 6. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. We're um, on week five of our New Testament reading challenge. So our verses for this week were Matthew 20 through 25. And our focus today is on this idea that no one knows the day or the hour, not even Jesus himself, when Jesus will come again. So we have to always be ready, not only to be ready to greet Jesus at the end of time or at the end of our lives, but to meet Jesus now in all of the ways that Jesus is making himself known. God's spirit is at work that we might recognize Christ day in, day out in every moment. So I hope this worship service will help um, help your soul uh, feel refreshed and renewed, will help you feel reconnected to God, will help you feel ready, and will open you up to receiving God's presence That um, through our worship service today. May you be blessed. Amen. Good morning. My name is Linda Youngstrom. And I'm Phil Newcomer. Please join us in the call to worship. Listen for the word of God. But God's word is rare these days. Seek God's truth in all of life. But God's truth is hard to find. Come and see. Look for Christ's presence. But God doesn't always feel close. In ancient times and recent days, we may doubt God, but God does not doubt us. God's word is always here, ever ancient, ever new. 
Come and see. Listen and learn. God, God is speaking, speaking to all, all of us, us now. now. For our memory verse for February, we've chosen Psalm 102, verses 1 and 2, verses about prayer. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. Will you join me now in our opening prayer? God, you have gathered us to this place to help us learn what the kingdom of God is like and to help us learn to serve you without reservation or hesitation. Fill the lamps of our souls with the holy oil of your generosity and grace that we might brightly shine in the light of your love. Amen. The Gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids <clears throat> took their lamp and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. <clears throat> the foolish took their lamps, but they took no oil to fill them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and sleepy. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough 
for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. My husband Phil and I got a phone call from our next door neighbor the other day, wanting to know if we have a set of jumper cables. Her beautiful Subaru wouldn't start and she had called a tow truck driver but the tow truck did not come with jumper cables. So she was calling around the neighborhood to see if anybody had a set uh, so the tow truck could give her a jump. We couldn't believe the irony of a tow truck sent to help cars in distress with no jumper cables. <laughs> I guess the tow truck company was only interested in towing her car, not in getting her up and running. Well, we were in Washington, D.C. when she called visiting our daughter, so we were of no help. But when we got home, we checked our garage and cars and realized that we, too, do not have a set of jumper cables. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thankfully, they are easily purchased for about 20 bucks a set. So guess what Phil is getting for Valentine's Day? The thing is, I remember having jumper cables. I remember my dad giving me a set when I got my first car. And then when we became a two-car family, he gave us another set. My dad's name was Ray, and we jokingly called him Safety Ray because he was always giving us safety-related gifts. Like when my sister got married, their first apartment was on the second floor of a frame construction building. And guess what he gave them for a wedding gift? A collapsible fire ladder, of course. I think most of us have that one person in our lives who is always ready for every situation. But in our parable today, Jesus is encouraging all of us to be ready. He has been teaching about what my Bible calls the end of the age. The Son of Man is going to come back, coming on the clouds with power and glory, and the world is going to change. Jesus said, no one knows when that will happen, not even the Son himself. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. Jesus says to be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The irony of all this is Jesus was talking to people who weren't ready for him the first time he came. He was talking to Jewish people who their whole lives had been taught to watch for the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Holy One of God, who would save the lost and reunite and restore Israel and make all things new. The people Jesus was talking to should have been more prepared than anyone to recognize him and accept him. But by and large, they didn't. He was right in front of them, but they weren't ready to receive him. They were like tow trucks without jumper cables, unprepared, not able to meet the moment. In our scripture lesson today, they were like the five virgins who did not have enough oil with them to participate in the bridal procession. And thus, they missed out on all the joy. But not everyone missed out on the joy. Some people were ready. Five virgins, five of the virgins were prepared. They had packed extra oil so that when the groom finally arrived, they could take part in the procession. The wedding festival Jesus is describing is so foreign to us because in our culture weddings happen on a precise date at a precise time we are so precise about the time that if the wedding starts even 20 minutes late we get very nervous when i was new in ministry i got a piece of advice from one of the local roman catholic priests at their church they had a problem with weddings not starting on time which was unfair to the guests and the priests and the musicians, and they also had to get ready for a mass later that day. 
So Father James told me that they started collecting $300 from every engaged couple. And if the wedding started within 15 minutes of the announced time, the couple would get their money back at the end of the ceremony. But if the wedding didn't start within 15 minutes of the announced time, Father James would keep the $300 and spend it on something fun for him and the other staff of the church. After they started that policy, they almost never had a wedding start late again. We like our weddings to start on time. But in Jesus's day, a wedding date was more like a due date for a baby. You know generally when it's supposed to happen, but it's an estimate, not an absolute. Just as babies come when they are ready, weddings in ancient Israel happened when they were ready. Often there was a delay as the relatives of the bride and groom haggled over the bride price. The bride and groom, the bride and her attendants could only sit and wait at her house until everything was worked out. Then the groom and his groomsmen would come to her house to collect her and her maidens, and together they would process from the bride's house to the groom's house for the ceremony. That's the procession Jesus is talking about in this parable. And delays were common, and having the procession at an odd hour was common. So all ten of the virgins should have been prepared for this very real possibility that they might need extra oil because they would be walking in the dark of night. If the five virgins who had extra oil shared theirs, they would run the risk of none of them having, none of them having enough oil to make it the whole way from the bride's house to the groom's house. So they could not share. Each person had to be prepared for herself. And sadly, those who weren't prepared missed out on all of the joy. As Jesus told this parable, he must have been hoping that some people in his original audience would come to realize that their teacher, the teacher standing among them, was indeed the Messiah they were waiting for. He must have been hoping that their spirits would be moved to receive him. But we know from the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus understood his mission to be bigger than just the Jewish people in his midst. What did he hope this story would teach later listeners, non-Jewish listeners, listeners like us? One important takeaway for me is um, how each person has to have their own individual faith. No one can carry extra oil for you. You need to carry your own. Each of us needs to care for our own souls and take responsibility for our own spiritual well-being. It's always good to enlist the support of others to help us, of course, but it is ultimately each person's responsibility to keep their spirits in good shape. It's like that old joke about the person who um, neighborhood was being flooded and so they um, went up on the roof of their house and they prayed God you know help me help me and a boat came by and they said no no and a helicopter came by and they said no no and when they drowned and went to heaven God said what's going on and the person who died said well you didn't save me and God said but I sent all these helpers you just didn't take advantage of them that's exactly our situation as people of faith. God has given us so many helpful resources. We have the scriptures, we have each other, we have worship opportunities, we have books that have been written over the centuries by people of faith. We have all kinds of means of grace, as John Wesley called them, all kinds of resources to help us keep our spirits in good shape. And it's truly up to each one of us to take responsibility for, uh, our, for the well-being of our spirits, for putting oil in our lamps and carrying extra. One of my favorite things about Methodism is the way we hold personal piety and social holiness in tension. And by that I mean, I mean we emphasize the need for individuals to care for their own souls and we emphasize our connection to others. As, as we said last week, staying connected is how we keep the faith. It's how we live out the faith. Social holiness is the idea that together we can make changes for the greater good. Our faith should be more than just our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Faith always involves community, communion, congregation. It always involves joining others to make a difference. The strength of our witness, though, is only as strong as the light of each individual. 
Five maidens walking with a bride in her house of the grooms is better than none. Five maidens with their lamps lit gives a witness that this bride is loved and her friends and family support this wedding and this community is pulling for the young couple. But wouldn't 10 maidens with lit lamps be an even stronger witness? And wouldn't the wedding party be more fun with all 10 of the originally invited maidens than just the five who had extra oil? Next Sunday is Scouting Sunday, and we will have members of our Troop 404 here at church to help lead the service. I'm excited for that. Some calendars call for Scouting Sunday to be celebrated this week, which would be great too. The Boy Scout motto is be prepared, and I think they would like this scripture lesson. The idea of be prepared comes from the founder of Boy Scouts, Robert Baden-Powell. In 1908, Baden-Powell wrote that to be prepared means you are always in a state of readiness in mind and body to do your duty. When he was asked what he wanted scouts to be prepared for, he answered, well, for any old thing. <laughs> His idea was that the scouts should prepare themselves to become productive citizens and strong leaders and to bring joy to other people. He wanted each scout to be ready in mind and body to meet with a strong heart whatever challenges await him. It's no coincidence that be prepared can be abbreviated BP, just like Robert Bader Powell's hyphenated last name, BP. In more ways than one, BP was his identity. Over 100 years later, scouts are still using the phrase be prepared. It's just part of who they are. It's in, um, in Spanish, Boy Scouts, translate this motto to siempre listo, which literally means always ready. And I think this is what Jesus has in mind for his followers, that it would be part of our identity to be prepared, to be always ready, that we would be prepared as best as we can to be ready in mind and body, to meet with a strong heart, whatever challenges await us. Being prepared, always ready, should be part of who we are as Christians, it should be our identity. We should always be ready and prepared to recognize and receive Jesus whenever he might come. And that means someday in the future, when the Son of God returns or when we die, whichever comes first. And it means day in, day out, being ready to experience God's presence and revelation in whatever form that might take. Readiness to meet Jesus takes a lot of effort. We can get so focused on helping others that we forget to take care of ourselves. I think that's what happened to our jumper cables. We, we gave them to our kids, but forgot then to get a new set for ourselves. We can get derailed in other ways too, by staying so focused on the past and how things used to be that we miss out on how they can be today. By focusing so much on our present dilemmas that we fail to plan for the future by letting frustrations and doubt wear us down, by wishing our mission were smaller and more controllable, and thus missing out on the joy that comes from owning that our mission is broad enough to include even being ready for the end of time. How ironic, a tow truck with no jumper cables. How ironic, people of Jewish heritage groomed for generations to receive their Messiah, but they didn't recognize him in their midst. How ironic if we call ourselves people of faith, but we fail to keep our faith ready to meet the moment. Actually, that's not just ironic, that's, that's tragic. What does Jesus want us to be ready for? Why, any old thing, including joy. How can you get some extra oil for your lamp, for your soul this week? Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart. We have not been content to live at the intersection of apathy and selfishness. We have not kept watch. We have not lived in holy anticipation. Wake us from our slumber, Lord. Shine the light of your love into the dark and weary places of our lives. Christ our Lord, have mercy upon us so we may be found sober and ready.
God shines in our hearts to give us the light we see in the face of Jesus Christ. Leave the darkness behind and accept God's invitation to live in the light. In Jesus' name, our sins are forgiven. enough oil in your lamp? Do you have some new ideas where you might go get some more if you need it? Have you thought about how God might be calling you to share your light? We don't want to be like tow trucks with no jumper cables. We don't want to be unprepared and unable to meet the moment. We want to always be ready 
in mind and body to meet with a strong heart whatever challenges await us. Thanks be to God for God's grace that we don't have to meet any of these challenges on our own, but we have going before us the very Spirit of God preparing the way. We have each other. We have all that we need. So let us take advantage of the spiritual resources in our midst so that we might burn brightly today and always and be ready to meet Jesus wherever we might find him. Go in peace and serve your Lord. Amen. Just as I am